Taro, how's it going, mate? <laughs> Good. I've been traveling a lot, so I'm just happy to be back home here in it in Santa Monica. I know. I see on your Instagram with your new book, uh, Healing Mushrooms. Yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, you've been traveling around uh, the East Coast. Way too much. Doing book signings and stuff. Yeah, exactly. My arm is... <laughs> gotta start out different That's workouts a good that. problem to have That's yeah a, good problem to have. a lot of signing mate i like to ask my guests when the first come on the first question is if someone who doesn't know who you are asks you what you do for a living what would your reply be it varies a lot depending on um who are they and how they behave usually i try to shock them and just say i'm a shroom dealer <laughs> or something like that varies a lot sometimes talk about my uh, background of just being a 13 generation family farmer from finland that's right. a more formal one yeah. and then i just uh well the common answer is i'm trying to figure that out like i don't know what i am right, and yeah. what i'm doing so that's also a common answer i give is like i'm still figuring it out yeah i have no clue yeah i think we all are really. yeah I mean, we all we all are all entrepreneurs are still trying to figure out and seeing which direction we're going in but uh, now with your company, Four Sigmatic, I think you've really starting to figure shit out, right? Yeah, we're doing pretty well. But to that point is like uh, when you introduce yourself, I think a lot of the things that we say is is not really who you are. Like, you know, you tell your name like, oh, I'm hey, I'm Tony. Like you can change your name. Like tomorrow right. you can be called something else. That That's not really you, is it? Yeah. And then you can say, oh, I'm uh, British. I'm an English, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can change your nationality. And then you can, and it's only like, it's just lines on the ground at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And then you're like, you're a boxer, but then what if you injure, hopefully not, but like, what if you, then you're not like who you are as a person, like, yeah. you That's know, a deep. kind family man That's or something. Deep, yeah. <laughs> we started on the deep end. <laughs> no, we'll get it lighter no, now. I love that shit. <laughs> So you come from a family of farmers, 13 generation yeah, farmers. Yeah, that's at least at least 13 generations. So Wow. You wow. Know, Finland uh, was part of Sweden for such a long time, we don't really know longer. But yeah. at least since uh, 1619. Have you ever done your family tree? I've, yeah, my dad has been into it. What, what is it with, uh, what is it with uh, men who hit like 60 years old or 55, they start to figure out their family tree. It's like <laughs> a point in life you're like, I just, I'm probably 20 years away from getting excited about it, but it's, it's a thing, isn't it? Oh, no, it's yeah, guys, yeah. guys at 55, 50, 60, 65, 70, it. they're like, let's go through the family tree yeah. now. So. I think by that, at that point, you really want to discover who you really are. Maybe. Yeah, That's totally. What it is. Uh, so was it always been mushrooms? No, uh, mushrooms have always been part of my life. So I started foraging for mushrooms early on, but it was, it was about, about uh, my dad's, I was uh, agriculture. So it was like farming for oats or, um, or taking care of the forest. Um, trees have always been important in my life. And then my mom's side was, she taught physiology and anatomy. So it was always about like, um, always about like um, nutrition and health and wellness. And then my passion was just like optimal performance, which right. kind of ties into sports as well as like, hey, what can you take naturally to improve your performance? Yeah. I was uh, I was lazy at exercise and so I tried to cheat with nutrition to be a better yeah. soccer player <laughs> or something like that. So were you were the generation that brought the mushrooms into the family or? Well, it's it's always been a foraging right. uh, foraging thing. Four Sigmatic is has has actually that brand has been around five years and it's no way attached to my parents and my family. It's, yeah. it's a company I started with a bunch of my other friends, so it's separate from it. Um, but yeah, foraging has always been part of the the lineage, but so has been berries. So we collect berries and it's not just about mushrooms, you know, yeah. it's like, it's just mushrooms are so odd and nobody else is doing anything on it. So I'm known as the mushroom man, you know, yeah. but e I'm equally excited about sea buckthorn and bilberries, you know, yeah. I'm so, looking, you, you've got a degree in Chinese medicine. No, 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 I, I don't. I, Sorry, I no. should. I've gone to traditional <laughs> Chinese medicine. Degree museum. in chemistry. Yeah. I have a chemi chemistry was the first one. And then I have like, uh, certificate in plant-based nutrition and right. things like that so one thing that i'm very interested in because i'm a, a businessman myself is uh, how, how does someone who goes from having a former background yeah uh, who's got a degree who's can i see it possibly a little bit nerdy yeah come in to become a very good successful businessman like yourself yeah i mean there's uh two things to come to mind first one is uh, about life in general is like are you a person who um, multiplies? Are you a person who adds? And what I mean is like, maybe in like you train with uh, those MMA fighters is like you have disciplines, is like you learn, you know, striking, right? And wrestling and all that stuff. 
like, do you just add them on top of each other or can you use them as a multiplier? So is, you know, three plus three, six or three times three is nine. Like there's a difference if you can like learn different disciplines. If you're really smart, you can actually learn a lot from mushrooms to business and you can learn a lot from aquaculture to business. Right. There is some things are similar in all those things. So one is just trying to look at everything you know in life um, as a way to learn to other factors in life. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. And then the second is like, I had no clue. Like I was just doing it. Like sometimes there's just amount of practice and um, you need humility to learn from people who already know. Like I had no clue. So I would just talk to people who had a clue and then right. try out stuff and not be scared to fail. And I guess that's that's another thing that is pretty true for a lot of stuff is is like, hey, you know, you come to a new country, you're an immigrant, you're trying to figure out stuff and you're just trying to learn, listen. You have two eyes, two ears and only one mouth. So try to right. keep that balance. So, your, <laughs> yeah, right. So you're self-learned, you would see. No, now I actually did an MBA. Uh, uh, after I started my business, I figured out that I actually have to learn uh, finance and figure it out. But actually, that was pretty useless. I right. would not recommend that to uh, an entrepreneur necessarily doing an MBA. At least for me, it didn't actually provide that much value. But I mean, it, it is important to know the language of, of business. Like, I think uh, even though if I don't enjoy like finance or, or business law or whatever, you have to know it. Like yeah. you have to figure out that you just can't be ignorant about it. It doesn't have to be your strength or your passion, but like you have to know how to pay taxes. You have to understand how profit and loss works and you have to understand what's cash flow and like, yeah, those are important things. Cause I know a lot of businesses that have been successful. They had a great product, great service, but if they didn't have the quote unquote fundamentals in place, right. they might have gone bankrupt, they run out of money or something. Yeah, I think that's very important in business, knowing all as aspects. But you you don't necessarily have to, like you see, you don't have necessarily have to be an expert at them different yep. things. Hire the people for, for them. Yep. So with, with your business, uh, now you you I know I know you're doing really well and you're around the world, selling around the world, right? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I mean, a lot of our education is based on English language. So that like kind of directs that we're mostly US, a little bit of UK, Canada, Australia. But then again, it's a global language now. So, um, but yeah, we sell to, I think like 60 countries or something. I don't even, yeah. I don't even know. That's awesome. Uh, so, cause a big thing of what you're doing as well is the affiliates as well. Yep. I think that is massive in business. So you're bringing people on. Yeah, or yeah. I would say just the, the, um, just the overall, the, the new way how people discover information, share information, yes. learn. It, uh, if, uh, we have a couple of big affiliates, but um, um, it's, it's, it's always been kind of this new way of digital word of mouth. Yeah. If you talk to any a pizza place here in the corner or a gym in, in, uh, in, in England or whatever, they're probably going to say, it's how do most people find you? It's, it's word of mouth. Yeah. You go yeah. to any yeah. legendary yeah. business, anything... Anything that's been successful, like, hey, referrals. Like, hey, we had happy customers. They told referrals. That works. But the always challenge that's been there is, like, it doesn't really scale. So then people buy these billboards and magazine ads. But yes. they're kind of useless for a young company. We, we couldn't pay anything. Right. Like, we had no money. Like, I couldn't pay myself in the first couple of years, really. So, so word of mouth this was important. Now what internet provides with social media podcasts, blogs, just everybody can become an entrepreneur a lot easier because of right. that. And you can also educate if you have something, a message. If you have nothing to say, then you have nothing to say. So this doesn't really help you. you don't, but if you have a message, like my message is that like, hey, you should give mushrooms a chance. It doesn't mean that mushrooms are better or worse than other foods, but like they have all these amazing properties in them yeah. and talking about that. So if you have something to share, be it boxing or you know baking muffins or whatever that may be um i mean that offers a lot and what's really cool is that it's a whole ecosystem so also if you have a platform if you're a good chef and a lot of people follow you because you're a good chef or in your case a boxer or whatever you may be you can actually make it like a side hustle you can make commission on you know talking about products you truly love like it doesn't work if you don't love it but if right. you truly like yes. i use a lot of products myself which i love and like i just talk to all my friends about it it's the most natural thing so that just offers it in a in you know in a way that like you can also earn a little extra buck yeah. and uh, that's pretty cool now as well i think just generally having two three different revenue streams even if you work 9 to 5 in a store it's actually really really smart idea to have like a couple little 
like even like a um, couple hundred bucks from here extra. Oh yeah, it all helps. It, it is a huge thing. What you said there about when you were starting off, you couldn't afford to pay yourself. Yep. Yeah, I was not seeing both. You, you couldn't afford to, to really push yourself in marketing and put money into marketing, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, it's still today, we like four months ago, we couldn't really do Facebook ads beyond like just basic retargeting, wow. like which I think more companies now do Facebook. Yeah. But so it like it took us like pretty much like four years before we could start doing any sort of advertising. And even then we're not like advertising how like companies advertise. Yeah. So. Was there a point where that turned or was it just you were bringing more money in? You understood that you needed to put money out to bring more money in yeah so we uh we didn't go out the traditional like an early stage company route where you just raise money from venture capital or whatever yeah. we started self-funded and we're like an employee-owned company so like the first years you're grinding and we had a couple like our fans give us a small amount of money you know what generally considered angels or whatever oh, nice. and but like that just kept the lights on during the tough, tough times. And then, but after a few years, we started to like, we had a little bit of extra. So we put the little bit of extra to these two things. And we went through a few events and we gave samples at a few events or we sent free products to people. And then that gave us a little more visibility. Now a little more people knew us. So now we started, you know, we gave a little bit of money to Ben Greenfield, for example. I think he yeah. was our first podcast we ever sponsored or something. Right. And we, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but like, it's like we had a little extra. So we like Ben here, you know, talk about us to your audience. He was already promoting us for free. Right. So it was only like a solid to obviously sponsor his podcast. And, and, um, and then it just builds on, you know, it's like yeah. a machine, but like it needs to have a great product or service. And then you have to be authentic about it. I think people notice if it's not legit and yeah. it's us like, so I think it actually kind of served us in a funny way, even though it was a horrible in a way, the first two years in multiple ways, but uh, it served us that we grew slow. You yeah. know, it helped us when we finally like, you know, got a little momentum. It, we were more prepared for it right. um, than if it would have happened immediately. Yeah, I definitely think Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, podcast advertising is is probably one of the best ways of advertising now. It's so real, you know, yeah. like um, all the people that we work, they're so pumped about our product even if we would not pay them. And then just like, we just enable them to put free content out there. So basically podcasts are a form of new media, yeah. you know, like authentic people telling authentic stories and authentic people sharing authentic educational material yeah. and just like chatting. And we're just, just so much of, like the traditional media is not that attractive for a lot right. of people. So, and podcasts are great because like you can just listen to them on your car or something yeah. like that. So, um, or I do them when I'm cooking, you know, I'm like yeah. preparing food or cleaning. It's a great time to listen to a podcast, yeah. right? So, uh, it's just a very authentic way. And I think, uh, when you find the right partners and the people who truly love whatever you do, then you should definitely sponsor them and also help them make good content. So basically you're paying for their living expenses and production costs to put out a lot of free, cool content for free. Yeah. So all these people can then enjoy the the work that they're doing. So that's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't got any sponsors on this. I spoke to your guy Ari about, uh, he's asked me about you guys sponsoring it. And it's something that I'm, I'm not interested in doing sponsoring, but I've talked about your product on this podcast yeah. uh, in the past and, because I love your product and, you know, if I love it, I'm, I want to push it anyway, not, not for the money. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I don't think uh, nobody's getting rich with the mushroom money. So, right. so I mean, it's not like Ben that we paid him for yeah. sponsoring podcast. It's not like he's uh, driving Lamborghinis now or anything like that. It just pays, pays for his family and get some food on the table for the kids yeah. and stuff. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that's everybody who's doing that is still like... I think doing it predominantly for the right reason. And thanks for supporting, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I love it. Like, I, I met you the first time a few weeks ago, and uh, Glenn, who's yep. a co-host on this, he's not here today. Uh, he 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 told me about the pro product, and I've always I've been one who never liked mushrooms. I don't like eating mushrooms, mm -hmm. right? So it's like mushrooms, like ugh, it's another one of these fads. <laughs> that's that's no, there's fads all the time. Yeah. Then he told me about it, and I met you. I tried your product, and I was like, wow. This is what do you try first? The coffee? The mushroom coffee? I tried coffee. the coffee, but I put some of that uh, lion's mane in. Yep. And I was like, whoa. And I told my wife, I, I felt clearer. I felt like, yep. uh, I felt like Limitless, you know, the movie Limitless. I yeah. Like, I felt great. And, uh, and I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting. I really did. And I remember 
going to bed that night thinking I cannot wait to wake up in the morning just to get my coffee. Yeah. A little kick. I love that. <laughs> so I'm hooked on it already. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I'm hooked on it already. What's, uh, so is your favorite lion's mane? Is that the one that you've felt the most? Yeah, that, that's, that's the one that I've been taking the most. But then then the, the sleep one, I took that one last night. So the Kaku and Relish. Is that right? Rishi. Rishi, sorry. Right. Yeah. Ka Kaku, Rishi. No, hot cocoa, cocoa, hot cocoa. Kaku, yeah, <laughs> cocoa. Reason. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's actually for you. It's actually extra hard because uh, <laughs> so um, Teopra means cacao is the tree that grows chocolate, cacao, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but when they uh, came to Europe, the British just called it cocoa. Yeah, cocoa. But it's alkalized, actually. Like officially, like the official thing is that if you use C O C O A, it means that it's been Dutch processed. So it's actually like it's not. It's in its fully natural form. Anyway. Right. Not to go into that deep end, but then the original name is actually C A, and most people write it C O. And yeah. anyway, just so, silly. But most people say hot cocoa, and they mean the same thing. It's like so your product comes in these little sachets, and I put yeah. the sachet in the cup, and then I fill the cup with water, and then I, then not until after I've done that, I, I looked on a video of how to make it. It was you talking about it, and yeah. so you should have like more of an espresso. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's a. Uh, you just you can put as much hot water as you want. Like some people want their coffee. I think espresso, like that's a strong one. Not everybody yeah. likes that. Some people want the big Americano or a latte that is mostly milk. The same way you can doctor it with almond milk. You can blend it with butter. You can right. put it in your protein. Whatever, like whatever makes you. Uh, yeah. The point is that these mushrooms are really good for your gut, and they are really good for your immunity. And um, and then they have these special skills like brain function for lions yeah. mane or kind of relaxation for Rishi and uh, but the point being is it's kind of like dark leafy greens every day you want a little bit of veggies and you know dark leafy greens in your diet the same way you want a little bit of these mushrooms that are good for your gut and immunity so yeah. so it's just important to have them in your system and you can have them in a chocolate you can have them in a coffee you can have them in a smoothie yeah. uh, you can you can eat them um whatever makes you tick as long as you kind of consume a little bit of yeah. every day it's so fascinating this you know i would never thought in my life i would speak about mushrooms for like three <laughs> hours i would sit here and ask you questions about these mushrooms you know uh, is it true that 90 percent of a mushroom is water and 10 percent is the well, it depends on the mushroom so that's right. like the common misconception about mushrooms is like either people think of a you know, uh, bottom mushroom or portobello mushroom, right. or then they think of like psychedelics, but there's actually like estimated 1.5 million types of mushrooms. How many? So 1.5 million. Oh, yeah. So six <laughs> times more than there's different types of plants. So for every, you go to a grocery store and you think, oh, there's so many carrots and tomatoes and whatever. Right. There's six times more for, e for each carrot. There's six times uh, of mushrooms. And, and we're actually breathing mushroom spores in right now. Right. You just don't know. Well. If you drink wine, beer, um, eat bread or cheese, which nobody, of course, ever does. <laughs> they, yeah, it, it takes a mushroom to grow it. And a kombucha is a yeah. symbiotic relationship between bacteria and m mushrooms. And, and uh, actually, we're right now on this beautiful podcast studio that you have here. And uh, we're, we're sitting on top of mushrooms. So 25% of Earth's biomass is expected. Well, this uh, is grass. Yes, but underneath it is mushrooms. So How do you know? Uh, I just know there's it's grass. Yes, but the grass requires mushrooms to collect water and nutrients. So there's like a network wow. underground here, and it's estimated that 25 percent of the Earth's biomass is uh, is a fungi. You see, 1.5 million, 1.2 million different. 1.5 million is estimated, but nobody knows. Yeah. It's just it, like we've only discovered a fraction of them, so that's just a guess, you know. Right. So I'm it's actually British people. A British guy invented that actually. So really comes from the UK. Yeah, they think of that. It's one point five yeah, million. British guys are really smart. <laughs> yeah, totally. Good <laughs> looking uh, as well. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so with all these different types of mushrooms, you are just working with a handful of them. Yeah, so you, they're not all good though. Like it's not. It's like oh, you should uh, eat like hemp protein, or you should like have this kind of a. Uh, um, good butter or whatever that you may see, like not all animal products are good for you yes. and not all plant products are good for you. Not all workouts are good for you. Yeah. Okay, you say that all movement is better than no movement, but you also know as a trainer is like you can really hurt yourself with yeah. certain stuff, right? So, okay, exercising is good, but you still need to know what you're doing. Right. And um, so that's one reason is not all of them are good. So we're focused on the most studied, these functional mushrooms that are actually good for you because some mushrooms are actually really bad for you. 
And then secondly is that if you know, most people don't know anything about mushrooms, they think of uh, what just something you put on top of a pizza, like kind of like oh, you. Yeah. Actually, most people don't like the flavor or the texture of mushrooms and right. our products don't have either, but nevertheless, they're like, eh, I'm not really into it. So you can't immediately start talking about 50 different kinds of mushrooms when they don't know almost any. Yeah. Like you have to kind of, what's like the gateway mushroom, you know? And then also you, you shouldn't really even care for mushroom number 56 or, 22 or even mushroom number 12 you should not be interested in that you should be focused on mushroom like the best mushroom in the world what, the second, what is the best mushroom in the world well i say when in doubt start with the reishi mushroom so r-e-i that's S-H-I, the one that I had with, with in the, the evening yeah, yeah that's the one that's um sleep is so underrated you know that like people like very motivated people want to work out all the time yeah. do uh build their businesses all the time just like push 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 but it's like kind of hard if you don't relax and rest as well so so that's huge and then um i would say the other one that you should get to know probably is chaga c h a g a these are hard yeah. names but uh but th- that's a really good one for like inflammation skin antioxidants type of stuff so yeah. those are those are uh, those are probably two the Chaga is called the king of mushrooms and Rishi is called the queen. And with what you do, you am I right in thinking that you, you take the mushroom and you pull the best parts out of it? Yeah, because these mushrooms grow on trees. They're not like your normal edible mushrooms. So Chaga and Rishi, you can't bite into. You have to cook them like bone broth. So yeah, you have to do this thing called dual extraction to make them bioavailable. So yeah, we've kind of like pre-done it for people because like... like uh, these mushrooms have been available for a long time, like a long, long time, but very few people use them because it's such a hard work to prepare for them. So, right. so that's why it's important to, um, to um, you know, uh, make it easy for a person, you know. Yeah. How do you find out the benefits of mushroom, like scientifically? Yep. So there's a couple of things on my side why I've been so passionate about mushrooms versus, for example, blueberries. I love blueberries, by the way. Yeah, agree. But um, so blueberries have a little anthocyanin and they taste yummy, but there's not actually like a crazy amount of research on them. And, and the funny part is that we are, you are about 30 to 50% mushroom as far as your DNA goes. Wow. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so animals and fungi used to be part of the same super kingdom. And because of that, we're very prone to fungal diseases like molds in buildings. We're very sick because we're half mushroom and we're sensitive to mushrooms. But we can also use mushroom medicine and mushroom healing benefits. It's a lot more bioavailable. So about 40% of pharmaceuticals are derived from mushrooms. Anything from penicillin to famous wow. immunosuppressants. So Smart. mushroom medicine is really powerful, so to say. And um, so um, there's a lot of research on them. There, there's like how they can affect over 130 like body functions and... Yeah, there's a lot of research on them. You just, obviously, it's a little bit of a gibberish if you're not used to looking at PubMed and looking at, you know, scientific studies. So it's like a little difficult to first understand in vitro studies. But like, yeah, that's where you get it. So but who's the guy that picks the mushroom and goes and, and uh, opens it up and looks at it? Like, no, so they're called the mycologists. <laughs> and they're, they're uh, I mean, I feel sometimes I'm pretty geeky, but they're like uh, on another level world <laughs> geeky. So they just get, might dedicate um, their whole life for one mushroom. They just study one, one mushroom, just one mushroom. Wow. Or like, like they really like drill down on a, but that's what, that's what there's a lot of people doing valuable work in the world, focusing on something super narrow and we never know, but they're helping, you know, science and the world get better on a very specific thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and not always people get the credit for their life work. Right. You know, of something, you know. Wow. So do you work closely with some of them guys? Or have yeah, you there's you um, I'm, yes. But I don't think that's been the limitation of why people don't consume more mushrooms. So how I try to look at it from more systems thinking is, so yes, I know my colleagues and I meet them and they reach out to us and I read studies. But I look at it as like, like kind of like you, it's like how can I get more people living a healthier, more fulfilled life? with the help of boxing, for example. Right. So um, is the lack that there is no b- boxing knowledge in the world? No, it's an ancient sport. We've There's a lot of people who know boxing, right, in yeah. the world. But uh, there's maybe like how it's taught has been a little like, okay, you live here and there's no boxing gym nearby. How can you learn then? Or that it's a little intimidating, that is, there's like a lot of guys here and it's like, am I intimidated to go and do it? And there's all these other barriers why you know, an average, um, 
like uh, person on the street might not have been doing boxing, right? The same with mushrooms. Uh, I don't think the limitation has been the lack of mushroom knowledge in the world. It's been more it's how it's presented. And, and so I've been more interested in working with chefs on how you can make it taste so that you don't even notice that they're right, there. Yeah. So that's been more fascinating for me. And like also talking to people like that can really make it like super simple and easier to use and figure out what are the actual barriers of more people taking mushrooms. And I think it's more like flavor, um, ease of use, um, and, and, uh, and things like that versus, or even anecdotes, you know, like, um, I feel like if there's a comedians listening to this, reach out to us, I feel like there's so <laughs> many mushroom jokes that to be told. And, yeah. and that's a great way to learn as well through humor. So, right, yeah. so I'm, I'm more interested in that, but yes, I know a bunch of them and, and get to get to read a lot of good studies. Yeah. So the Rishi, is it a relish? Yeah, Rishi? it's a Japanese name. It's like kind of hard. They call it here in the U.S. Like in some areas, they call it the hemlock varnish mushroom because it looks like there's varnish on it. This is but... your most popular one. No, I'd say it changes. You know, it changes. Like different countries, different thing. Um, right now, the lion's mane that you've been taking has been pretty popular. The, like the coffee is actually the number one. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, coffee's. No. Coffee. I posted on my Instagram, on my Instagram story uh, a couple of times. I think I've tagged you in, my, my yeah. tagged you in them. And like, this is mushroom coffee. And there's so many people messages, what's mushroom coffee? Like, what, yeah. What's the benefits? I just tell them to go to your page. But I was really shocked at the response that I got from just that one post. Like, people's very intrigued to find out about what's, what mushroom in coffee? What the fuck's this about? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's such an outrageous thing. Right. Is that like, <laughs> um, yeah. And now you've got it in chocolate. Yeah. Mushroom and chocolate. Yeah, that, that gets people excited. Yeah, I bet people love chocolate. Chocolate is the best gift in the world. So if you're, if you're trying to sell this to someone, obviously you come on here to, to educate people about it, but what would you, what would you say? Why should, why should someone uh, buy fossil? Or why should someone have mushrooms in their lives? Yeah, I think that those two different questions, like I, you don't need to buy Four Sigmatic. That's, that's not my message. My right. message is that, and I'm not saying is like a lot of people hype stuff in nutrition as well as like, hey, this is the next super berry from this remote island in the Pacific Ocean and it's going to heal all your problems. No, it's not. That's not my point. I just saying is that uh, um, um, mushrooms have been here a long time. They've been here longer than plants and animals. The world needs mushrooms to survive. You have to have mushrooms to be here. They are a kingdom, right. same way as plants and animals and bacteria. So we need them in the world. Um, there's a lot of research how they can help your he health and life um, because of the DNA similarity and the, you know, the essential nutrients they have. And most people are not using them, so they're overlooked. So just adding a little bit of mushrooms into their life can help people improve their immunity, skin, cognitive function, relaxation, or energy. There's one for sports called cordyceps that a lot of people take before yeah. a workout. So that's like the kind of message I am is not that they're better than others, but they're here. They mean a lot for the world. And there's a lot of research on them. You should look into them and trying to figure out how can you add more mushrooms and fungi into your life. And then what Four Sigmatic does is just gives an alternative for people to use them in an easier way, in a more tasty way. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can still, you don't need to buy Four yeah. Sigmatic. You can go out foraging for yourself. You well, know? I highly recommend Four Sigmatic. I've never heard of any other companies that do what you do. Yeah. So, but I highly recommend it because it's doing uh, wonders for me. And I, and I love your product. I really do. I'm not just, Thanks, you know, like I said, I, I'm not endorsed at all by, by this, but I absolutely love what, what you do. What do you think of the chocolate? I really liked it. I'm not a chocolate fan though, but like for chocolate, it was nice. I have one piece. Yeah. I, I'm not a chocolate fan, but my wife loves it. Yeah, take it to the kids. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. Uh, so... Jackie Martin is, she's uh, my friend who researches my guests that come on and yeah. uh, I already knew enough about you, so I didn't really need the stuff that she sent me. But one thing that she sent me is you sleep on a nail bed. Yeah, I slept today. I, I might still have it on my back. I took a nap. Let is me there see. like sign? Is there still holes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did it. <laughs> <about>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sleep, uh, usually nap on it, not sleep. No. Uh, I fall asleep for a sh short 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 15 minutes, depends on the day. And uh, it's actual nails. You know, there's also these plastic ones that they sell on Amazon. I'm not the biggest fan of those. But it's acupressure. So um, acupressure is, 
you know, some might even say yoga is acupressure. You squeeze and you release and yeah. it improves uh, blood circulation. But these nails particularly like fully relax the body and the nervous system. So I think actually a thing why I think lion's mane is so powerful as a mushroom as well as how underrated the nervous system is. Right. Um, like you can take somebody who's really fit, but they've never boxed and you take them through some of your drills, I bet they're like extra sore oh, yeah. and they're messed up because their nervous system is like trickling different, uh, yeah. different things, right? Yeah. And, um, and that, that can happen in life in general just by the stress of normal day, you know? Just like we get bombarded with all this social media and work and travel and cities and noises and oof. So then it's like at midday through the day or uh, before lunch or whatever, I try to sleep on a nail mat and just relax my body. So it's full on nails. Does it it's hurt? From, yeah, it hurts. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, but it doesn't penetrate the skin. So like the point is, it's like what are those called fakirs that were in India and like they would do this thing. But like when you when there's nails are close enough to each other and there's many of them and you put your body evenly into them, they will none of the nails will penetrate your skin because every nail will only carry a little bit. It's like pushing your you know, a nail into your finger. That's yeah. how it feels because the weight is distributed evenly. Yeah, yeah. But it totally relaxes. It knocks you out and like, dumb. You feel a lot better. Yeah, and then you wake up so fresh and amazing. <laughs> but yeah, then it's like, it's funny if you go to gym after that. I've done it a few times and people are like, what's happening in your back? You're having, <laughs> You're fighting with everywhere. your missus or what's <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> so people, who wants to find out more about mushrooms? Your book, Healing? Yeah, Healing Mushrooms, Amazon. It's like 10 bucks. Try to make it as cheap as possible. It's a cookbook and an information book about the 10 best mushrooms in the world. And, right. and there's like fun ways how you can use them making, um, if you have a holiday season now, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, there's like mushroom mullet wine, Cordyceps on the beach, which is cordyceps <laughs> plus sex on the beach. Nice. And there is a lion's mane whiskey that protects your brain as you're chipping on whiskey. And That's then there's awesome. mushroom bacon, mushroom ice cream. Yeah. So different just ways how you can use them. But I feel like if, if, if you drink coffee, I think you should definitely give mushroom coffee a chance if you haven't already done that. Right. I feel like that's a very easy way of a lot of people getting into the benefits of mushrooms. Yeah, we'll put all these links to the book and everything else in on the yeah. show notes, boxandlightpodcast.com forward slash mushroom. Let's have mushroom. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, let's I do love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing. I want to talk a little bit about your the shroom room. Yeah. Abor Kinney, Shroom Room. So, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, so we launched in, um, in August of this year, we launched a, uh, a Shroom Room, just for the laughs of it, on Abor Kinney, and we have a store, and we just give free mushies, free mushrooms for people who uh, pass by. So if you're in, in California, L.A., Venice Beach, and you stop by there, just come say hi, hang out. Um, there's a mushroom coloring book for you and mushroom pants that I'm wearing and all kinds of, all things mushroom. And then you can also uh, have free drinks, free mushroom tonics and whatever. You just come and say, what's your mood? And we'll give you a sample. So Yeah, that's awesome. Like I've been there a few times, so I'm taking advantage of the sample. and yeah. been there. But the guys in there is very knowledgeable and I'm always asking them, is it Tyler? Who's, what's it? Bryce. Bryce, sorry, and Bryce, yeah. Uh, Anna. Yeah, yeah, it was Bryce. And Bryce is really knowledgeable and he tells me everything yeah. that I need to know. Uh, so yeah, that's on Abba Kinney and go there and you can, and you can and I mean, them. if they go well, uh, we might open somewhere else as well. But for now, that's the only place, yeah. the only shroom room in the world. I love it. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you? Well, I think the book is a great starting place. Uh, we also have a free Mushroom Academy online. If you like online videos, just go online to foursigmatic.com and there's a Mushroom Academy and you can just become a a uh, mushroom expert at home, any place, any time. That's the beauty of online. You like wherever you're living, wherever you're staying, you can become an expert. And maybe you'll not become the best in the world, but yeah. you can become very easily. You can become in the top one percent of a given field just by today's tools online. So yeah. try to do that. And then uh, on Instagram, it's I am Tero, um, T E R O. So nice. That's and we'll it. tag you in the videos. And yeah. We'll uh, put you on on the show notes. And yeah, I mean. Every now and then, something comes along that I get like pretty obsessed with. The last one was cold showers. I was obsessed with cold showers and the mm. benefits and all that. And the new one is, is mushrooms and Four Sigma. Yeah. I, I love all this. I really do. And I highly recommend it. Uh, but, mate, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks it's for having me great. on. I've learned a lot. You're, you have by far the best podcast studio I've ever done. I'm, I've done a cute few one of these podcasts but this is a winner yeah this is the best winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> <laughs> thanks mate thanks man